Hello, and welcome to Military Spouse live stream, Mill Spouse Transition live stream. Why can't you find your career and manage your family's transition from active duty military life? Looking for a job is never easy, but when you couple that with all the other parts of transition, there is an additional layer of challenges and fears that happen. It can take months, even years, and even with all of that hard work, time, and energy, there is no guarantee that you're going to get a great position at the pay rate you deserve. I think this is a story that every military spouse has thought about. Enter military spouse jobs, bringing an opportunity for career counseling, upskilling, certification training, and a network of employers who are searching for someone just like you. Now, this is not just another job search agency or a resume building organization. Instead, Military Spouse Jobs supports the transitioning military spouse from start to finish. So reduce your stress levels, start that three-step process, let's assess your career goals, accelerate your education, and align yourself to move into a career and a position that supports your active, active duty life dreams. That's what we're going to be talking about today with my guest, Denise Lewis. I am so excited about this conversation. I've been doing like this series of career kind of conversations and job finding and mentorship over the last month. And this one is really kind of the culmination of all of those things all together. So I want to get started with um, Denise's bio so I can bring her up and we can start chatting. So here we go. I'm going to do this. So Denise Lewis is the director of DEIA initiatives at Military Spouse Jobs. <clears throat> that is diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility for corporate America. Um, and and uh, she supports vet jobs and the Military Spouse Corporate Career Network. Ooh, that's a lot going on in that very first paragraph. So two, new, two unique nonprofit organizations that provide employment readiness and job placement assistance for all veterans, military spouses, National Guard, reserves, transitioning military, military affiliated survivors, caregivers, divorcees, and youth. Okay, so did you see that massive list? We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Denise is an Army brat who was born and raised in West Point, New York. She's an Army retired spouse who has been an advocate for the Army her entire life. She holds a master's in management and leadership. As an Army spouse, Denise moved 26 times in 34 years. Okay, I don't know anybody that can beat that number as of right now. If you can beat that number, drop it in the comments because I'm super curious. But man, that is a lot of moving. Um, this definitely affected her employment opportunities, promotion, retirement, and pay inequities. Denise is grateful for the ability to serve and ensure that all military-affiliated candidates have equitable opportunities for career advancement and employment. Her diversity outreach initiatives are strategic and inclusive. She is in alignment with the organization's goals to ensure that we recruit diverse candidates who are underserved in the military-affiliated minority populations. She also manages several diversity programs in the organization, the Survivor, Gold Star, Caregiver, and Employment Network, and Maria McConville Career Internship Program, and the Military Youth Job Network. Denise lives in Outer Banks of North Carolina, which affords her the opportunity to have a work and life balance. Go Army, beat Navy. Now, I had to add that one in, being an Army military, retired military spouse and from the Army myself. Go Army, beat Navy. And we saw that happen this year. Woohoo! Um, okay, so without further ado, I am going to drop this bio and I'm going to bring up Denise. Hi, Denise. Oh my gosh, Anna, you already have me so hyped up. And I'm thinking as you're reading that bio, I'm like, oh my gosh, who is that person? <laughs> me. <laughs> it's you. It's you. Hi, Amy. We're so glad to have you here today with us. Uh, and we've got John Larson coming from Exos facility in Sunny, Florida. So we've got some people online right now that are so excited to hear what you, the superstar, has to say about this whole career conversation, like start to finish, because it's not just about getting a job, is it? No. And you were so kind to say superstar, but I would say maybe the person that maybe can help align the stars and the moon with your career 
you know, initiatives um, and employment opportunities. Um, so, you know, right off the bat, I just kind of have to say, like, just take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Transitioning is already so incredibly stressful, you know, and as you're going to go into these scenarios, each and every one of them, no matter where you are, you know, in your transition, just take a deep breath because sometimes you just need that moment to just catch your breath and just let the dust settle. Yeah. Yes. You know what? Thank you for doing that because you know what that just did? It made me stop and go. (laughs) And I feel better right now, (laughs) right? So if you are watching right now, just stop for a second in and out. Ah, um, okay. So I, when, when having the initial conversation with Denise about where we wanted to take this live stream, we wanted to start by setting a scene. Okay. Because there's what what Denise just said is really true. There's lots of different phases of transition and lots of different types of transition that you might be going through. Um, so there's a possibility that you're ETSing right now after six years in active duty life. You've got young children. Your spouse's next job may or may not be paying the bills. You're feeling a lot of stress about how you can support your family financially. Or maybe you're staring down that med board tunnel and terrified about what is coming next, dealing with challenging medical issues, that active duty life you've lived is not going to be something you can count on any longer. You aren't sure if your spouse is even going to be able to work at this point, and it's up to you to find a career and a job that's going to support your family. That might be where you're at. Or you're transitioning, and it's been 20 or more years of active duty life. You've always wanted to have a great job. Well, we know how this goes, right, Denise? We always want to have a great job, but rarely do you find something that is fulfilling or you haven't been able to work at all because of PCS moves. Um, Let's remind everyone that Denise has done 26 and 34 years. So PCS moves and all the other stuff that goes along with active duty military life. But transition is giving you a chance to take your turn to step into a career that you've always wanted, but you don't know how to take that next step. So if we're talking about like these scenes, these three scenarios that I threw out there, um, can you tell me about these three different military spouses that I just described? Do each of them meet the demographics of who you're trying to reach out to and who military spouse job serves? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Because, you know, as you said, those 26 moon moves, you know, sometimes we get so hyper focused on, okay, what do we have to do next? You know, where where are we going? Where are we gonna live? You know, who's gonna watch the kids when we move? And if I'm looking for a job, um, are we gonna have enough money to make ends meet? Am I receiving, you know, pressure from my significant other because it's like, okay, I worked all these years. Now you have to get a job. And it's like, you say to yourself, where do I start? Because I don't even know where to begin. And, you know, as Anna, you know, in this space, there's over 42,000 nonprofits that offer similar services. And the one thing that I can say with each of those scenarios we meet you wherever you are in your career journey. And guess what? We're a one-stop shop because there's a lot of organizations. Maybe they help with resume writing. Maybe they help with LinkedIn optimization. Maybe they help you with job placement. But the luxury of what our organization does is that you will work with a with one-on-one with our career specialist. They have dedicated time just for you. And we are nationwide. So no matter where you move, we're there for you. We work virtually after 24 to 48 hours after you connect with us. Um, We set up a virtual meeting. And the other thing is that's so amazing about our organization is that we are all either veterans or military spouses. So we get it. And that's what really makes us unique because we're kind of like, we end up becoming your friend. We really, 
you know, talk about what your experiences are and where you are in your career journey. Um, so uh, again, when I go back to that one-stop shop, when we have just so much going on in our lives, whether it's little ones, um, you know, we're in the 50 plus community and we're getting ready to transition out, that that's how we can help. And you don't have to go anywhere else because we help you, you know, in what we'll talk about in a little, in a little bit is, you know, that assessment phase, that alignment phase and that accelerating phase. Um, so you really don't have to go anywhere else. And that can be, you know, um, um, comforting to know that, oh, OK, well, I did my resume here. Um, and I, um, you know, am looking for a job here or, okay, this organization offers training. So we can get into a little bit of that when we talk about, you know, those three areas. Yeah. So, so tell me, tell me two things. Let's just get some of these, like these administrative questions that people are going to have off the, off the table. Is there a fee for using your services? So sometimes I'm a little weary when I um, answer this response because okay. so all of our services are no cost. And sometimes some people go, oh, my gosh, well, what kind of services are there out there that are free like that? You know, they must be nefarious. We are just so incredibly grateful to our funders um, that pay for this programming for spouses and veterans. So it does not cost you a dime uh, for however long you're in the program. Maybe you get a job with us, you don't like the job, you take 15 million training platforms, it does not cost you a dime. Um, so, so that's what's really, really impactful. Okay. And then when I first introduced this topic today, I talked about more than just a military spouse or a veteran, that it included also caregivers, gold star spouses, divorcees, youth. Can you talk a little bit about that? About like if you have a child who's 18, 19, maybe isn't going to college or wants to, wants to start a career path instead, are you available to help that military spouse child or military spouse child, that military child, not, not just the military spouse child? Yeah, I claim them as my own, I guess, whatever. <laughs> so, so, and that's the unique thing about our organization. Um, because we do not receive government funding allows us to expand who we can serve. And, you know, my heart goes out to spouses because, and I call them spouses because once you're a military spouse, you're always a military spouse, whether you're divorced or not. And sometimes, af, you know, as your soldier transition, sometimes things change in your relationship. And a lot of those sp spouses don't have those um, resources uh, that were once available to them. So, um, so yes, we are there to help divorce spouses. A lot of spouses in our survivor communities, especially survivors of suicide, also aren't afforded a lot of those benefits uh, or resources. And that's where we bridge that gap. Um, and then for our youth, because a lot of people that are in the 50 plus community as they're transitioning out after 20 years, um, you know, they have a lot of kids that are in college um, and are either they're getting ready to graduate. So that's where we can also help them. We help youth from the ages of 16 to 26 years old, um, because um, we also find in our survivor community, a lot of kids... Um, sometimes choose not to go off to college because they don't want to leave that surviving parent. So we offer uh, the same resources that we do for our um, uh, spouses and our veterans. Really, I mean, I love this so much because it really is comprehensive throughout the military community, right? Um, you know, you will find a lot of programs that will offer it for one one category or the other category, but not really so comprehensive. So I love that. OK, so let's jump into um, our first conversation about assess. OK, so let me just. OK, here we are um, in the intro. I talked about the three phases 
assesses the first one. Can you tell me a little bit more about what it means when someone enters your program and you start them through the assess phase? All right. So basically, once you register into our program, and you know, and and I I I suggest this especially to our transitioning spouses, is just register because maybe that might even help you with your significant other to say when they're giving you the pressure, you know, are you looking for a job? Have you done the thing yet? All you can say is, guess what? I registered. And then the benefit of that is you can also still take a deep breath because you don't have to immediately engage yourself in something at that point. Um, it gives you the flexibility to look through what we offer. So typically what usually happens, you register and within 24 to 48 hours, you are contacted by your designated career specialist. And so basically they set up, um, they give you a calendar invite. So it's at your leisure when you want to set up that schedule, or maybe you're not even ready to meet with that career specialist but you have access to all of our training platforms. And that's what I'll talk about in our accelerating portion. Um, but, um, you know, it gives you an opportunity because sometimes after that long extended period, you haven't had a chance to work. So, you don't. you say to yourself, I don't even know what I want to do or what I want to be. So we have a, um, a career exploration and assessment phase. We also have a lot of spouses that we find that are transitioning out of certain types of careers like teaching and nursing based off of the long hours. Um, and people are really looking to align more of their passions to employment because that's also really important. So you know, that's where you are able to engage with your career specialist and talk through those things and, and use those tools to really see, you know, what your career interests are. Um, and then we also help with uh, fez federal resume writing and interviews. Um, we help with LinkedIn optimization, which is really important. A lot of spouses sometimes think, well, I, I have I've been out of work for a long time, so I, I, you know, I'm not going to do LinkedIn right now. Um, and LinkedIn still is really important because, as you know, Anna, a lot of um, employers ask for your LinkedIn profile. Yes, they do. So we can help fill what that looks like. And so if you volunteered, we can help translate your volunteer experience into actual work experience. And just taking LinkedIn, you know, and using that as as any other social media device, it's a professional um, uh, platform. Um, so you will build, you will learn if there's an industry that you're interested in and start following some of those industries. Um, and then career specialists basically, you know, help um help you write a targeted resume. So that's where we're unique because we work with over 3,000 employers. What we're able to do is we're able to help once you're ready to write that resume and look for that job, we're, we're able to help you uh, tweak that resume. And just a quick um, success story, we had a candidate come in um, who desperately needed a job, identified the job, and it wasn't even a job that was on our job board. Um, we helped them tweak that resume. And within five hours, that individual um, ended up getting a job offer. Oh, my um, gosh. That which, is a huge success story. <laughs> right? Right. Um, and, you know, with that, um, we just went over 97,000 hires uh, since 2010. Um, and we're metrics based. and. That's what also makes our organization really stand out because um, it was important to our president and our funders to validate that we're actually doing the work. Yeah. You know, one of the things I really love about what you've been talking about is that during this assess phase, it is at the pace of the military spouse. 
um, that may be going through these challenging transition times, right? Moving for the last time, trying to figure out where your kids are going to school, trying to support your service member through their own transition. And finding a job is a massive emotional drain and time time drain as well. So I love that what you're saying is this is on your timeline. That, it, you know, if you get yourself registered, at least you're in the system. And then from there that you can take it take it as slowly or you can move as quickly as you want through that process of meeting with a career counselor, talking through your options, looking at where you are, what you've done, where you've been and what you're going to need then to move forward. So I just I love that part of this because I think that we find we military spouses put a lot of pressure on ourselves to get things done. Right. And especially during transition it, it's an overload and it can cause that massive breakdown where then you don't want to do anything at all or you're incapable of doing anything at all. And so I, I'm just going to encourage you right now, if you are a military spouse going through that transition and you're worried about getting a position or what your career might look like, or if you can even have a career because you don't have the education or the or the job history that you think might support a career, I encourage you to just go register. And I'm going to drop that link um, as soon as I ask Denise this second question, which is about the next phase of the program. So we talked about assess where you come in, you meet with a career counselor, and you kind of take a look at where you are currently, your current state. So now we add in accelerate. Tell us what happens during the accelerate phase. Well, I mean, you just brought up a really valid point about, you know, some spouses, and 92% of spouses are female. Um, and, you know, what's the overall mental toll? What are the things that you have missed out because you've supported your soldier, you've raised kids, and maybe you've missed out on education op opportunities. And then you look around and you say, okay, what do I do now? And how do I even start? Because I don't have a degree. Um, right now, what is happening is that there are significant hires on Indivi for individuals who have skill-based knowledge. And when we talk about the acceleration part, you know, um, we have over 28,000 um, training platforms in a variety of languages because a lot of, you know, we have to also um, acknowledge our spouses who are foreign speakers um, mm -hmm. and looking for those opportunities. So um, we have classes that Everything from 10, five minutes, 10 minutes, four weeks to six months. Um, and another um, thing that's happened is legislation has come out with um, uh, new, um, I don't want to say laws, but um, where in the past you used to have to have a four year degree uh, to, in order to work um, in a cybersecurity position. And now, um, you know, they're making the mandate that all you need is certification. We have extensive uh, training platforms and certifications that are available to spouses. I mean, I wish, um, you know, if I could start over 20 years again, I know people say, or my daughter would say, well, mom, why don't you do it? And I'm like, oh, girl, I just, I don't have the mental capacity right now. Um, but you know, there's those opportunities. And the other thing that I would also add is, you know, even to those spouses who already have degrees um, or you're currently in a position, a lot of our training platforms, what they do is they could potentially increase pay opportunities mm -hmm. for promotion. Um, you know, and even for me in my position um, as the director of diversity and Nick, initiatives. Yes, I'm black and a woman, but I wanted to have the education to support um, my promotion. And so I was able to take um, training platforms from the University of Rice and um, uh, Irvine um, in uh, California. Um, and so that was just something to help 
accelerate me and make me a subject matter expert in my organization. I love that. So, okay. So through this accelerate phase, you have access to all of these different potential certifications, upskilling, and also like even just that investigatory, like, do I really want to have a career in this area? So if you can, if you take a, a class and find yourself bored out of your mind, maybe that's not your career of choice, you know? Exactly. exactly. I okay. mean, that, that is really another great thing about, um, you know, that portion. But I would also too, cause you also brought up another good point is, it's also important to, to do your own due diligence as it relates to um, an organization that you may want to work for. Um, what are what are their initiatives? You know, do they are they you know open to creating a sense of belonging? You know, as you're so I know I jumped ahead because we're talking about the accelerating phase. <laughs> Maybe I'll wait for the uh, the align phase because I think that that's what's also really important. So, OK, OK, <laughs> she's stopping. She's stopping. So well, let's just jump into the align phase, because I think that we've covered pretty well the fact that any military spouse that is interested in in finding that career, um, whether it's pre-transition, during transition, post-transition, <clears throat> if you can, if you start at step one and you assess where you're at and military spouse jobs can help you do that with a career counselor and then move into the accelerate where you can test out maybe that career that you're looking at or upskill in the areas you need or even look at like different training opportunities to help find that career area that you might be interested in based on what is available. And now we hit the align phase, which is kind of like the step three of what we're talking about. So tell us, Denise, what happens during the align phase of working with military spouse jobs? Okay. And then one thing I will add with the accelerating phase, this is also a great phase, especially for Youths who maybe have decided not to go to college, these training platforms are also available to them. And they also can receive those certifications mm. uh, through the accelerating phase. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, unfortunately, our youths don't have those options. Um, and, you know, sometimes I know because I've, I've had children that it's like, you know, kind of try to push them towards it and you know they have to find their own interest but it could be exploratory for them and especially those who are gamers um there are a lot of potential um employment opportunities and certifications available to them as well oh my gosh i think you totally just hit like 70% of the teenagers and you, young adult or adult dependents that are out there right now that love to do that and would love a job in that industry, right? But it does feel unattainable. So I think that's maybe one of the main points of what we're talking about, right? Like before you say to yourself, it's unattainable, register with mill spouse jobs, military spouse jobs, and find out if that's really true or not. Because there's the potential that because that industry is growing so quickly and so exponentially, they might have some ideas for you that you've never even considered um, as being a job opportunity or a skill set that you hold that you maybe not didn't think would translate to a career position. And it will. So I love, I love that. Absolutely. And before, and I'm sorry, before we do go to um, a line, you know, a, a lot of our spouses who are in our 55 plus community, and then they also find that, you know, maybe after their soldier has transitioned out, it's been five years and maybe they thought, okay, you know what, we can, you know, do pretty well off of our um, retirement and they find that they can't do that any longer. Mm -hmm. And so I would also say our training platforms aren't scary. If I can do it because I'm in, over that. <laughs> I'm in, <laughs> of that certain age. <laughs> the seasoned age, as I like to call there we it. Go. 
very seasoned. <laughs> but if I can do it, and we also had um, a survivor in our internship program that we also hired, and she's also in our 55 plus community and went through um, our marketing internship program. And she did phenomenally well. And she's also an advocate for our training platform. So I just wanted to get that out. Yeah, I think that's, I, I just think it's so important. Like every time we talk, we bring up something new that's available that, you know, wasn't in the initial conversation. So if you're listening right now, if you're thinking about that career next step, again, zero cost to register and to just start that conversation. And that's really like, you know, for me at Mill Spouse Transition, right? You know that that is like my motto, like just start having the conversation. Who knows where it's going to take you? If it ends up being something you're not interested in, then it's done and it's gone. But at least you know at that point. And it's not something that you then backtrack and regret not having started at the point where you could, where it could have made a huge difference in your life, right? Okay, so let's jump into the align phase. Talk to us about the align phase, what that means, where it takes you. All right. So as we talked about in the assessment phase, you are partnered with a career specialist. So in the alignment phase, then you are partnered with our Recruiter Connect specialist. And so what are Recruiter Connect specialists? Uh, their primary job is to work directly with our 3,000 plus recruiters. So they have that direct connection. I mean, that's like the insider opportunity that everyone else out there does not have that opportunity. And that's why we are able to help write those targeted resumes. And guess what? One of the things that we run into is we often have spouses, veterans, those from uh, diverse backgrounds not disclose because they're fearful that that employer will not hire them. Guess what? Our employers want you because you're a spouse, because you're a guardsman, because you're a reserve, because you're divorced, because you're a military youth a survivor, a caregiver, we've already vetted them. So that's another like, okay, you know, I'm in, I have somebody that's literally going to hold my hand through the process. And maybe if that interview didn't go well, then that recruiter connect specialist will maybe tell you and have that direct connection to tell you what maybe, you know, might have happened. So Again, we work with over 3,000 employers um, and, you know, some of the jobs might not be the initial perfect fit. Maybe it might be just the job that you need right now because you are going through some financial insecurities. One thing that that does is that gives you an experience with that employer or for you to be able to put on your resume. But if it ends up really not being the fit, and you end up doing the right thing by giving your two week notice, guess what? You can still come back to us. I love that. Even if you're not happy with that job, maybe it was an employer, maybe it was something that you needed to share with us that we need to talk to our employer about. Um, but if, if you needed to take a break after that employment opportunity, you wanted to go back into our training, platform or portal, or you ended up liking the job and there was an opportunity for promotion. So you wanted to use our training, training platforms for that. We are available to you at mm -hmm. no cost. So if you're a retread, it's no cost. Um, so, I, and again, when I talk about the importance, because as we know, there was the great resignation People were making a gazillion amount of dollars as you know in their current positions. But a lot of them left because they just were not happy and they were no longer feeling fulfilled. That's the yeah. thing that we can help you align. Um, and, and that's what you'll kind of do in the assessment phase of aligning what your passion is and 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 matching with that employer. And I think it's also really important 
that when you um, look for an employer, look, do your work. Look into who is that employer? Does their initiatives align with your initiatives? It's almost like mm-hmm. going to a doctor. Sometimes we're afraid to say to the doctor, um, doctor, my right arm hurts. And he tells you, no, but it's really your left arm. So, you know, even though you say no doctor, but really it's my right arm, you know, being professional um, in that way to really look um, and, and ask those questions, even in the interview process of some of the things that align with your passions, that's also okay as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So really like you cover not just start to finish, but when you come back to restart and when you need to take a break and, you know, maybe rethink what you've decided. And I'm, I mean, I love that this program is so entirely comprehensive. You're like one of the best kept secrets out there. (laughs) Now, I guess with 97,000 job placements, that's not really a secret in that sense. But I don't think a lot of military spouses, especially military spouses that maybe are divorcees or going through a divorce or have young adult children, um, or, you know, these, these military spouse categories where they do feel like there's not a place for them in some of those traditional programs that you do hear a lot about. So I'm just going to encourage everyone, military spouse jobs. I dropped the link. I'm just going to throw it up here, right? Just register. It's the first step to finding the career you always wanted. I dropped it right down there in the comments. So if you jump in there and just register, just see what there is. I mean, based on what Denise says, there is something for everyone, whether you're in a career currently, thinking about a career, have a job but want to switch to a career. I mean, there's really literally something for everyone. Um, And so I hope you take advantage of military spouse jobs and what Denise has described as their three-part process and where that can truly take you. If you were to give one piece of advice to a transitioning military spouse about this career conversation, what would you tell them, Denise, to kind of close us out today? Well, one thing, especially for transitioning spouses, 365 days goes like this, and you lose a lot of resources that are available to you out there, especially in the transition realm. And again, take a deep breath and it's gonna be okay. If I can restart my career, you can restart start your career too. Um, and our services we have, so we have the veteran side. So if your veteran runs out of time um, in that 365, you know, time frame, our services are also available to them. And if you do have questions, for your youth about where they would register, they would register through military spouse jobs. Yeah, so the veteran job site is different, right? Um, It's vetjobs.org, is that correct? Yes, V-E-T-J-O-B-S dot O-R-G. Yeah, and then the other one is militaryspousejobs.org. So, okay. Thank you so much, Denise, for being my guest today, um, for letting all of these military spouses out there know more about what you offer and the opportunity that they truly have um, to truly find a career that fits what they want, that aligns with their education, that aligns with their passion and their, their goals. And I know sometimes that's that murky area when you're transitioning and you don't know. So how great that your program doesn't force a career immediately, but allows you to explore all of your opportunities. I feel like that is such a key to what we've been talking about today. Um, So I also want to say thank you to our sponsor, SpouseLink. And as a transitioning military spouse, you probably have way more questions than answers. And that's why AFMA created SpouseLink to support, inform, and inspire military spouses like you around the world with resources you need to lead your family back to civilian life. I'm going to drop a link to millspousetransition.com. Everything that Denise and I talked about today will be available 
on a blog platform. So all the links to find her, all the links to do all those things, which reminds me, we need to tell you how to find Denise really quick. Let me add that to the stage. Denise, can you tell everyone where to find you? <laughs> yes, so please absolutely positively reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, but you can also email me at dlewis at militaryspousejobs.org. Um, and I'll just quickly add too, especially which we, might, we didn't overlook um, and you were not, um, we, you were not overlooked, but just for our o Oconus spouses, a lot of them are transitioning back to the States. Use our services while you're in preparation tra to transition because our services are also available to you. Oh, that's great to know. So Oconus spouses, if you are listening, if you hear this, you also are eligible to utilize this. Um, yeah, I love this. Uh, one, one final question for you that just popped into my head when you said that, can you tell me our military spouse jobs, the careers that are available, the jobs that are available, we get a lot of complaints about everything is entry level. Do you have a good expanded version of everything from entry to truly professional level careers available for these candidates that come to you? Yes. So we have, so our basic um, average salary that our candidates make um, is $82,000. But if you are a spouse who has been out of the job market and you maybe have missed um, opportunities to go to college, I would highly suggest because we are partnered with some amazing organ organizations like HOH um, uh, Chamber and um, MSEP. There are some phenomenal fellowships out there. So if you need that jump start to get you a higher paying job and a non-entry level job, I would highly suggest to also reach out to us to get connected to those fellowships. Perfect. That was the answer I was hoping for, Denise. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Okay, now we really truly are going to say goodbye. We are truly going to kind of end this live stream and let you get on with your day. Thank you again, Denise, for being my guest. Make sure you hit me up on LinkedIn. Hit Denise up on LinkedIn. Follow her. Find out more about militaryspousejobs.com. Um, I do want to say our next live is going to be with Tyrone Lewis. And it is going to be talking about is TAP really for military spouses. I said Tyrone Lewis and it's actually Tyrone Hewitt because I'm reading your name. <laughs> it has been one of those days. It feels like a Monday. It is a Thursday. So is tap for military spouses with Tyrone Hewitt that is happening on March 26th. That's next week, 2 p.m. Eastern. And you will hear more about that when I download that and get that um, event registered on LinkedIn and YouTube and Facebook and all the different places. So Denise, thank you again for joining us today. I truly look forward to hearing about the more success stories of military spouses. They heard this live stream and are ready to jump into that career that they've always wanted. Um, thank you everybody for joining us and we will see you at the next live stream.